This is the story of Miguel Rivera and his adventure to the land of the dead on Dia de los Muertos. You can read along with me in your book. You will know it is time to turn the page when you hear this sound. Let's begin now. See, a long time ago, there was this family. The papa, he was a musician. He and his family would sing and dance and count their blessings. But the papa had a dream to play for the world. And one day, he left with his guitar and never returned. It was Dia de los Muertos in the Mexican town of Santa Cecilia. A young boy named Miguel Rivera worked in his family's shoe business. Miguel was the great-great-grandson of the musician. His great-great-grandmother was Mama Imelda. When her husband left, she learned to make shoes. And she taught her daughter, Miguel's great-grandmother, Mama Coco, to make shoes. The business was handed down from generation to generation, along with Mama Imelda's one rule. No music! Miguel was not like the rest of his family. He had a secret. He loved music. He wanted to perform in a talent show later that night, but his grandmother, his abuelita, forbade it. Dia de los Muertos was a special day. It's the one night of the year our ancestors can come visit us. We put their photos on the ofrenda so their spirits can cross over. Miguel looked at the photos of his ancestors on the ofrenda. They were all there, except for Mama Coco's father. Abuelita scoffed. He's better off forgotten. When Abuelita wasn't looking, Miguel snuck up to his hideout with his friend a street dog named Dante. Inside was Miguel's ofrenda to his hero, late musician and actor Ernesto de la Cruz. De la Cruz had come from Santa Cecilia, just like Miguel, and he had made it big. No more hiding, Dante. I gotta seize my moment. Taking his guitar, Miguel tried to sneak out of his house, but Dante jumped at the offerings on the family ofrenda, breaking the photo of Mama Imelda. Miguel picked up the picture. It had a piece hidden underneath. A man was holding a guitar with a handle carved to look like a skull. His face was torn off, but Miguel recognized the guitar. Miguel showed the photo to Mama Coco. Is your papa Ernesto de la Cruz? Mama Coco nodded. Papa! Papa! Miguel was overjoyed. He was going to be a musician, just like his great-great-grandfather. When he told Abuelita, she was furious. She picked up Miguel's guitar and smashed it. There. No guitar, no music. Miguel was heartbroken. He ran all the way to Mariachi Plaza, but he could not compete in the talent contest without a guitar. So Miguel snuck into De La Cruz's tomb. The musician's famous skull guitar was hanging on the wall. Miguel gently touched it. Señor De La Cruz, please don't be mad. Uh, Miguel, your great-great-grandson. I need to borrow this. Miguel grabbed the guitar and began to strum it. Suddenly, something magical happened. A pile of marigold petals on the floor started to glow. Frightened, Miguel dropped the guitar and ran out of the tomb. He saw his mama and papa. He tried to reach for them, but they walked right through him. He was invisible to them. Miguel had somehow crossed over into the realm of the dead. Only Dante could see him. All around him, Miguel saw skeletons visiting their living relatives. Miguel turned and ran right into his ancestors, Papa Julio, Tia Rosa, and Tio Oscar. Miguel was amazed. They were all really there. Everyone, that is, except Mama Imelda. She hadn't been able to cross over. 
but she would know how to get Miguel back home. Together, they all went across the glowing Marigold Bridge, which connected the two worlds. They found Mama Imelda at the Department of Family Reunions. A clerk explained that Miguel was cursed. Dia de los Muertos is a night to give to the dead. You stole from the dead. Mama Imelda couldn't cross over because her photo wasn't on the family ofrenda. It was in Miguel's pocket. Miguel needed his family's blessing to send him home before sunrise, or he would turn into a skeleton and remain in the land of the dead. Mama Imelda agreed to give Miguel her blessing if he gave up music. Reluctantly, Miguel agreed. But when he arrived back at De La Cruz's tomb, he took the guitar to play it again. Seconds later, he found himself back in the land of the dead. Miguel needed a new plan. He couldn't give up music. If I want to be a musician, I need a musician's blessing. We gotta find my great-great-grandpa. <laughs> Miguel and Dante snuck away from Miguel's ancestors. They hadn't gotten far when they ran into a skeleton named Hector. He claimed to know De La Cruz. Hector offered to help Miguel, but he wanted something in return. This place runs on memories. When you're well remembered, people put up your photo and you get to cross the bridge and visit the living on Dia de Muertos. No one's ever put up my picture, but you can change that. Miguel agreed to take Hector's picture back with him. Using shoe polish, Hector painted a skeleton mask on Miguel so he would blend in. Together, they headed to where De La Cruz was supposed to be rehearsing for his big sunrise spectacular show. But the musician wasn't there. He was hosting a party instead. Miguel learned there was a music competition going on in Plaza De La Cruz. The winner would get to play at De La Cruz's party. Hector and Miguel borrowed a guitar from one of Hector's friends and went to the Plaza de la Cruz. Nervously, Miguel took the stage. Encouraged by Hector, he played one of de la Cruz's upbeat songs. The crowd went wild. Just then, Mama Imelda and the rest of the Rivera showed up. Miguel quickly pulled Hector away before he could see them. When the MC announced that a family was looking for a living boy, Hector was furious with Miguel. You could have taken my photo back this whole time? Miguel shook his head. But they hate music! I need a musician's blessing! Hector started to pull Miguel toward his family. But Miguel broke free from his grip. Throwing Hector's picture in his face, Miguel ran away. Miguel ran right into Mama Imelda. They argued, but then she began to sing. Miguel was confused. I thought you hated music. Mama Imelda shook her head. I loved it. But when we had Coco, we were a family. Something that mattered more than music. I wanted to put down roots. He wanted to play for the world. We each made a sacrifice to get what we wanted. Now you must make a choice. Miguel refused. But I don't want to pick sides. Why can't you be on my side? That's what family is supposed to do. But you never will. Ignoring the hurt look on Mama Imelda's face, Miguel turned and ran. Miguel snuck into De La Cruz's party and finally met the famous musician. Suddenly, Hector burst in. He was slowly fading because he was being forgotten. It turned out that Hector had written all of De La Cruz's songs, but the famous musician had never told anyone that. Listening to Hector's story of being betrayed by De La Cruz, Miguel suspected that Hector's death was no accident. De La Cruz denied it and had his security guards remove Hector. Then he grabbed Hector's photo from Miguel. De La Cruz smirked. Success doesn't come for free, Miguel. You have to be willing to do whatever it takes to seize your moment. 
De La Cruz de security threw Miguel and Hector down a large sinkhole. A golden flicker fluttered through Hector's bones. She's forgetting me and my daughter. I just wanted to see her again. I wish I could tell her that her papa was trying to come home, that he loved her so much. My Coco. Miguel pulled out the old photo. Is that you? Hector nodded. Hector was Miguel's great-great-grandfather. He touched the photo sadly. You know the worst part? Even if I never got to see Coco in the living world, I thought at least I'd see her here. But she's the last person who remembers me. The moment she's gone from the living world... You disappear from this one. Hector told Miguel that he had written a song for Coco. It was De La Cruz's most famous song, Remember Me. We used to sing it every night at the same time. No matter how far apart we were. What I wouldn't give to sing it to her one last time. Miguel smiled. My whole life, there's been something that made me different. And I never knew where it came from. But now I know. It comes from you. Just then, Dante appeared above them, followed by Mama Imelda. Mama Imelda's spirit guide, Pepita, swooped down into the sinkhole and pulled them out. Miguel hugged Dante. Dante! You knew he was my papa Hector the whole time! With that, Dante began to glow in bright colors and sprouted wings, revealing his true spirit guide form. Miguel agreed to accept Mama Imelda's blessing, if they could get Hector's photo back. He tried to go home to you and Coco, but De La Cruz murdered him. Mama Imelda was shocked. Miguel, if we help you get his photo, you will return home. No more music. Miguel nodded. Family comes first. Reluctantly, Mama Imelda agreed to help. Hector and the Rivera snuck into the Sunrise Spectacular. Backstage, they confronted De La Cruz. Mama Imelda managed to snatch Hector's photo from the musician, but she wound up on stage. Mama Imelda performed a song dancing around the stage to avoid De La Cruz and his guards. When the spotlight turned on De La Cruz, Mama Imelda ran off stage to where Miguel and Hector were waiting. She gave Miguel the photo. Miguel, I give you my blessing to go home, to put up our photos, and to never forget how much your family loves you. Suddenly, De La Cruz grabbed Miguel. You're not going anywhere. Ernesto De La Cruz dragged Miguel outside. He grinned evilly at Hector. You think I'd let him go back to the land of the living with your photo to keep your memory alive? No. <laughs> Miguel struggled in De La Cruz's grasp. Music is supposed to bring people together. You tore my family apart. Hector's the real musician. You're just the guy who murdered him and stole his songs. Angry, De La Cruz flung Miguel over the edge of the terrace. Pepita managed to pull him to safety. But Hector's photo floated away. Luckily, Miguel's family had managed to turn the camera on De La Cruz. The audience saw everything. Pepita grabbed De La Cruz and flung him into the air. Meanwhile, Hector was fading. Miguel didn't want to leave, but it was time for him to go home. He made a promise to Hector. And I won't let Coco forget you! Hector smiled as he and Mama Imelda gave Miguel their blessing. With a whirlwind of marigold petals, Miguel found himself back in De La Cruz's tomb. Miguel grabbed the skull guitar from the tomb and ran home as the day broke. He burst into his house and ran past his family into Mama Coco's room. Mama Coco, can you hear me? It's Miguel. I, I saw your papa. Remember? 
Papa? Here, this was his guitar, right? He used to play it to you? But Mama Coco said nothing. Miguel looked down at the guitar and had an idea. Mama Coco, your, your papa, he, he wanted you to have this. Quietly, Miguel began to play Remember Me. The whole family gathered to listen. Slowly, Mama Coco's face brightened as the song brought back happy memories of her father. Softly, she began to sing. When they finished, she smiled. My papa used to sing me that song. Reaching into her bedside table, Mama Coco pulled out a piece of a picture. It was the missing piece of the photo of Mama Imelda Hector and baby Coco. She hadn't forgotten her papa after all. Miguel pieced the photo back together and placed it on the ofrenda. A year later on Dia de los Muertos, the Riveras, living and dead, gathered in the courtyard of the shoe shop to listen to Miguel sing and play his guitar. Hector and Imelda stood arm in arm the recently departed Mama Coco placed her hand on Abuelita's shoulder. Miguel was right where he belonged, with his family. And for the Riveras, family meant love, food, and once again, music. Subscribe to my channel for new stories all the time.